Welcome to Ball and Play, presented by Baseball News Club. We cover everything with a ball and stick around the world. We cover Major League Baseball, to international, Dominican, Australian, to Korean. We also cover NCAA Baseball Division I and softball, all the way on down, Little League softball, to T-ball. We cover over the line, wiffle ball, anything with a ball and stick. We will cover it here at Ball and Play. Please stop right now. I need you to subscribe. Please comment and also turn on your notifications. Thank you very much. And let's get started with this journey we call baseball. All right, here we go. Welcome to Ball Play, episode 12, presented by Baseball News Club. Boy, do we got a great show for you today. Let's get it going. Please stop now, subscribe, download, help support us on IG and YouTube. But again, we want to thank all of our listeners out there. And let's get this show going. This is an action-packed show. Um, first off, all of our fans out there, we're, if you want to download us, uh, it's very simple. Just go type ball and play into your favorite search engine. Someone the other day said, "How do I? where do I find that? I told them, go type in ball and play in your favorite search engine. And they're like, so where can I find it? I'm like, you know what? I can't help you, man. I mean, I'm not going to hold your hand all the way. But anyways, we're popular. i um, noticed a lot of downloads in uh, South America, specifically Brazil. So shout out to everyone there. Canada, uh, some Australia, some uh, Europe, some Japan. So thank everyone out there. We're really big on Pandora, Firefox, iHeartRadio, and Apple Podcasts. So again, just giving a shout out to all of our listeners. This episode is going to be dynamite, guys. <clears throat> As we've told you in prior podcasts, as we build up to the regular season on April 7th, uh, we're going to start breaking down divisions more and more. We did a little bit last week. We're going to start tightening up. And as we go through the weeks, we're going to tighten it up so we can determine, you know, are these moves the team's making going to get you to the promised land? So today we're going to talk a little NCAA. Uh, We're going to talk about the the games on April 7th, uh, the WPC. Alex Scrappy Hopkins in the news, OTL, oh yeah, Uh, exciting all-star news, Mike Clevenger pitching in a minor league game, good news there, Jacob DeGrom, Uh, Mike Trout, Ozzie Gein's in the news, Albert Pujols is in the news, Um, let's see, Major League Baseball changing the rules around, we're going to talk a little bit more about the Yankee sign stealing scandal, Joey Votto. Joey Votto, I've got some great news with Joey Votto. You guys have to listen to the podcast just for that. Freddie Freeman news, more drama in Atlanta, Trey Mancini on the radar. So anyways, let's get this podcast started. we got a lot going on today, guys. Let's start off with NCAA. Uh, just going to touch real quick, the home run leader for NCAA men's. We had Tommy Tanks White that was leading it with a little while ago, but uh, Jake Giloff from Virginia, and then Ivan Melendez of Texas. They both have 13, so right now, those are the home run leaders in college for college baseball. And then, um, <clears throat> so that's a, that's cool stuff, man. When we actually been posting that stuff on our YouTube channel, Baseball News Club, so check that out. Uh, another NCAA news, Ben Joyce, Tennessee, 104 miles per hour. Uh, last person to do that, supposedly, was Jordan Hicks in college. Uh, dude, I've been talking about this for the last week and a half. We posted this on our Baseball News Club. Check it out kids throwing gas um we talked about the wc coming back 2023 that's super exciting news and then we also talk about over the line otl a lot of you on the east coast probably don't understand this because it's to me this feels like it's more of a west coast thing because you have to have sun a lot to enjoy it but i grew up playing over the line i played over line in south mission beach before just randomly i played in the tournament once it's a super fun thing i've been to otl a bunch of times in fiesta island all i'm saying is if you've never been Go enjoy yourself, man. Go get your hotels now in Mission Beach or or Pacific Beach in San Diego. Get it, It's around July they start doing this tournament. It's a multi-weekend tournament, so you've got plenty of opportunities. But if you really want to experience San Diego Beach life and good times, go to the Over OTL contest. Like I've told you guys before, this is not for the lighthearted. There's certain rules. There's the, the call to bees, no babies, no bottles. Um, so there are certain rules. This is not somewhere you want to bring a child or or at any age uh this is a pretty much adult atmosphere a lot of fun going on but i'm just saying it's 
it's your beer league softball on steroids, but it's it's fun. So if you get a chance, go do that. Also, another news: don't forget about the Mexican League Baseball KBO. I've been posting on our instant Instagram stories the KBO schedule. Uh, it's on VIP box. I was watching a game the other night, but they're not on till like 10 o'clock Pacific Standard Time. So that's really late for East Coast folks. So, anyways, check that out. That's exciting news. I'm just trying to encourage you guys to make sure you stick with these leagues. Um, just because, you know, we got baseball back, still support those leagues. And in exciting news, we've got Alex Scrappy Hopkins. First woman drafted by a pro team. Yeah. So exciting news there for her. Uh, the pro team is the Kentucky Wild Health Genomes. <laughs> Um, she's a catcher, eighth pick, and it's the Atlantic League. So, dude, that's not no Bush League. That's not low. Atlantic League's competitive league, so one of the highest leagues. So congratulations to her. That's exciting news. Again, Alex Scrappy Hopkins, first woman drafted by a pro team, Kentucky Wild Health Genomes. Um, and other news, something cool about the All-Star Game. This I saw this this week, and I'm like, man, that is cool. They have something called the Junior HRD or JRHD. It's the Junior Home Run Derby, man. The Junior HRD or JRHRD. It's the Junior HR Derby. This is like for little league kids, man. They're going to have an HR Derby for the kids. So this is brilliant. Whoever came up with this should get kudos. Kid, this is going to be great. Kids are going to love this. Kids are going to love this. You know what's going to happen? Kids are going to, when they see this, there's going to be thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of kids going out to their favorite place to start playing HR Derby contests. And here's what I predict. Here's what I predict. I'm calling it right now. It's going to become very popular on YouTube. I'm telling you, those Blitzball and Wiffleball guys are going to be bummed. Uh, I support Blitzball. I support Wiffleball all the time I'm talking about it. But, oh, dear. Little kids start playing HR Derby. You can forget wiffle ball and blitz ball for a while. Um, why those are fun. Hitting tanks is what little kids want to do. So I, I'm totally excited. I get, I've get i talked to some different people and I've kind of felt the pulse on social media and comments. And it's kind of here and there. A majority of people are for it. But there are some people out there that don't think it should be part of the All-Star game. And speaking of the All-Star game, if it's tight after nine, then it's decided by an HR Derby. The cool part is if they actually let that to be decided by the junior HR Derby kids. I think that would be cool. But anyhow, let's move on to other news. Um, I think I probably just want to dive right in. The New York science stealing scandal, we're still waiting for that to come to fruition. We're still waiting for the letter to be released. That could be a little while away, especially if New York, you know, if there's any type of appeals or push for it. But supposedly it's supposed to be released. But so far, we'll I'll believe it when I see it. That's how I'm going to look at the New York science and scandal and you know this is a cloud that's already forming above a already possible questionable season for new york i still think they're a solid team but we'll talk more about that later um speaking and still in with major league baseball major league baseball and mlb players association agreed to automatic runner on second base for extra innings what i know we talked about this didn't we remember when i went over the cba guys and we talked about this they the cba originally said no to ghost runners which has been in place for two seasons we remember that and it's been a controversial thing some people hate it some people don't for me i the only reason okay i get it to keep up the speed of the game but i can't tell you guys those are some of the funnest stories i think all of us that are adults understand what i'm going to talk about right now some of us that are young might have but there's nothing better than having the school after in the summertime and you get to stay up late and you, it doesn't even matter if it's your favorite team. And all of a sudden there's this 15 or 18 inning game that you've never experienced. It's just fun because you're staying up and nobody gives a crap. Like your friends, you're texting, or your family's going to bed. No one cares. I remember the Mets game when I was younger. The went like 18 plus innings or the Atlanta game. I'm sorry. So I remember watching the extra inning games. It's free baseball. It's great. But the way the game has progressed, the Players Association and the owners, they don't want their players playing extra inning games forever. Um, to a fan, fans want extra inning. I'm all for free baseball. But this, the game has changed. Maybe it's changed for the worst. Maybe it has. In a lot of ways, maybe, you know, if I'm going to get on my soapbox, 
that is a perfect example of how the game has changed is the extraneous rule before i was a big fan all my friends that know me i loved using the word free baseball when it came to extra innings i'm off free baseball it's extra i love extra inning games i remember as a kid like i said staying up super late i remember one time my parents i can't remember what team it was uh but I remember my parents coming out to the den and it was like 12 31 in the morning. It was still extra innings on this one game. And they're just like, you still watching this game? I'm like, yeah, frick. Yeah, man. It's extra innings. Um, I get why. So I'm not here to, to, you know, get a rebuttal on why major league baseball players association want this. Obviously it's to keep the players healthy and they don't see a benefit of it. If it's going 15, 20 innings and, you know, the players, it's just like, I guess you can compare it to pitchers. Pitchers used to be traditionally complete games, high in innings, finishing it. There wasn't middle relief. There wasn't really closers, you know, until you get to the 70s, 80s and it starts building in the 90s. But um, it's similar to pitchers. Nowadays, pitchers go four to six. Uh, their complete games are a thing of the past. I mean, they happen, but usually it's just a, a few sprinkled here on the radar per season. But this is another thing about baseball progressing. Um, I mean, you're going to be able to put 14 to 15 pitchers, you know, out of your, what, 26-man roster. You're going to be using that. So, originally, let me digress before I go on my tangent. That's, I'm just trying to give you guys something to compare it to. To me, it's like pitchers. You know, that position has changed in the sport in the last 20 to 25 years. And same thing with that. I guess Major League Baseball is trying to protect and the Players Association is trying to protect their players and their investments. And to the fans, it sucks because we're going... Well, our ticket prices is going up more and we don't even get freaking free baseball. Well, what they did is originally the CBA said no to Ghost Runners. And then, you know, for whatever reason, they agreed this week. They announced, yeah, we're going to go back to it. So we used it for two seasons. Uh, we're going to put an automatic runner on second base for extra innings. So now we're back to it. So it's like, you know, make up your mind. But this is stuff where I talked about in the last couple of months, how that you can adapt to the CBA. So there's... The top important things, and then this wasn't like, obviously this this type of thing was an agreement, tentative agreement when they ratified it, when the players ratified it. Uh, part of the contract was stipulated they're still going to, that's subject to change. So there's, I'm sure there's a couple other things that are subject to change in the CBA, which both sides agreed to. Now this aligns and changes with the DH Shohei rule, which they also have announced where now the pitcher after pitching can still be DHing or go into be DH position, so you're not pulled from the game, and it's completely because of Shohei. So that young man is changing the game last year, and he's changing the game this year. He's looking great in spring training. Um, so this again aligns with the changes with Shohei. I think they're just adjusting the season a little bit for whatever reason, uh, for whatever financial motivations. But hey, here we go. Um, in other news, like I said, uh. I've seen, I've been watching a ton of spring training. Uh, I've got four games going on my personal computer. I got one on my cell phone and then I have one on my tablet. So I've got games going on all day long. Um, it's really weird to talk about spring training. I do want to go off on this a little bit. It's weird to talk about it because as fans, we get super excited early on. You see people hitting home runs and you see teams with certain records. This in spring training is really not to bust your bubble. You can't really get your hopes up too much of what goes on in spring training. You see a lot of your uh prospects which is one of my favorite things to do man i've been seeing so many great prospects I, i'm going to talk about a few of them uh today but uh jeremy pena for example for houston but anyways there's with the spring training you take it with a grain of salt because hey some of these players won't even be playing and then you know the reason i say it is when i look at clayton kershaw he looks good early uh, Jacob DeGrom is healthy, but once the regular season, they're not doing 100%. You guys got to remember, uh, they're out there throwing 70%, 80%. They're not, you know, DeGrom's not spinning up 102 miles per hour. So they're building their strength, and that's not just going to be spring training, but because of this late start, you're going to see some weird baseball, I think, in the first half. I think you're going to see some teams going really nuts, but the the solid pitching staffs as they go out throughout to the up to 100th, 120th game, you're going to start seeing the solidification of these teams and who are the solid teams with those solid core players. Uh, but I, what, essentially what I'm trying to say is, you know, just take spring training with a grain of salt. Uh, seeing Mike Trout hitting has been incredible. Uh, watching Jacob DeGrom, he looks solid against Houston. Uh, a few innings and then the best thing on Sunday, Jacob DeGrom pitched three. 
and then they gave the ball to Max, and Max went five. I mean, think about it if you're on the other team and you're like, uh, <laughs> you're a rookie and you're like, ah, oh, great, this is my debut, and I get to face Jacob DeGrom and Max Scherzer. Uh, psh, that sucks. For eight innings, you got to face those two guys. So, hey, man, it is what it is. Baptism by fire. Uh, in other news, Ozzy Ginn. Yeah, old skip, old Major League Baseball player. He rips the robot idea. He came out really blasted in the media, talking about if the robot umpire idea is what I'm saying. He's saying if that continues to climb up to the minors to the major, he thinks it's the stupidest idea. And he says anyone that's played the, the game ever, uh, especially if you're in Little League, if you know anything about the game, you know this is the dumbest idea ever. Um... I kind of agree. I, you know, we've seen some really bad examples of the robot umpire, where it's it's not going to be 100, percent and that's, you know, that's the theme, man. It's it's kind of like the driverless cars. Driverless cars, you still have the capability to take grab the wheel and automatically take over. I mean, if an umpire sees an absolute, because we show that example on our, uh, if you go to Baseball News Club and look at our, our videos, but also have an I, an IG, if you're gonna there was an example in the minor leagues where it was a super outside pitch. I mean, it was like, dude, like a foot and a half. To, I mean, nobody calls this a strike. And the umpire delayed, and then he got the chime in his ear, and then he called a strike. The player dropped the bat, put his hands on his knees, and dropped his head, and was just like, you got to be kidding me. That is the problem. That is going to be a problem if the umpire, they've got to have a system in place. And again, I don't know about a lot about the system, and nice to have somebody on the show that knows a lot about the system if you do uh email us uh, we'll invite you on the show and we'll talk about it but i'd like to know the the logistic details of the program in the minor leagues what in relation to how much authority or override does an umpire have does is the umpire absolutely tied to what is basically drawn up by the computer or can the offer my umpire override and go and you know what I don't care what the computer's saying. There's no way in hell that was a strike. That is the issue. And I agree with Ozzy Gant. It's a stupid idea. But they seemed, it can it start started way down in the minors. And it's crawling its way up. It's being used in all levels now. So, ah, oh, geez, scary. And then also another news, um, I don't know if anyone's noticed or for what it's worth. A lot of people don't like him. Uh, Robinson Cano. I think he's got a great bat. He played in the, the Lightham. He's been quietly having a spring training, so he's back on the radar. A lot of people forgot about him. Someone that people forgot about who showed back up, uh, we don't know his exact age, is Albert Pujols uh, signed a one-year deal, I think for $2.5 million, uh, for St. Louis. So obviously St. Louis is going to be using him largely as a DH. I would like to think this is his swan song. This is his retirement season. If he was smart, he would announce it before April 7th. And that way he could do like the Jeter tour, man. I mean, come on, you're a slam dunk Hall of Famer. You don't, you don't even have to punch your ticket. They might as well just start creating your space right now and creating your bust because you're a Hall of Famer. Unless you really freaking blow with something really bad. But we know Pujols is straight up. So he's going to the Hall of Fame, but this should be his last season. Um, there is a breakdown of his contract. And what's funny about the contract is there's a hundred K in there for a gold glove. No way. Hell that guy's winning a gold glove. You can put him at first base 162 games. He's not winning a gold glove. He has no lateral movement. The guy is extremely slow when he runs. It's like I'm 50 and I'm, you know, I'm older than him. I could run way better than that. But, uh, that's funny. They put a hundred K for gold glove in there. So a lot of stuff is incentive laden. Now, Again, the reason I feel like this, I've seen some, you know how I look at social media and to get the pulse. There's actually a lot of Cardinal fans not happy with this because they, I feel like they aren't, and they're good fans and they're smart fans, but I get where they're coming from. They're looking at like, hey, we want guys to help our team. I get we want to do a swan song with him, but we should have done that last year, but he's not going to, what is he going to do? The dude had two decent seasons in four, 2014 and 16. And since then, he's never been above 245. He's been a horrible hitter. And I get it. You know, he's, he had great years in St. Louis, but he's been riding that, that, that ticket forever. So how's it going to help them? I don't know, man. I don't know if it is a big deal or not at this point, to be honest with you guys. But let's move on to other news. Uh, Kaitel Marte for Arizona Diamondbacks signed a five-year extension. Yeah, 
That's good, man. That's good. Keep him there. Um, personally, I think he that dude could have went a lot of places. So it's kind of head scratching that he accepted it. But you know what? Sometimes if you like where you're at and you get a good deal, why not? It's just five years. <clears throat> um, now in totally bitching news that I just been dying to talk to you guys about. This is probably the one thing I I should actually leave this towards the end, towards the end of the podcast to be honest with you guys, but I won't be a jerk. You, we all know who Joey Votto is. Love the guy. Had a great season last year. Phenomenal season. I feel sorry for him because he's on a team that's having a fire sale. Cincinnati's not going to be good this year, guys. And you can see it in the money they've spent, which is not much. Now, two levels. I'm going to give you two stories about Joey Votto. Not like Joey Votto stories. So, pull right up, sit by the fire, grab your s'mores, beer or soda if you're under 21. Or if you're in Alabama, if you're under 18 for drinking. Um, Two things with Joey Votto. In regards to the New York sign stealing scandal, Joey Votto came out and said, and I quote, the idea that the, that, okay, the Astros are in parentheses, so that's added, assumed, but we all know who he's talking about. So again, I the, and I quote, the idea that the Astros were the only ones doing it or doing something wrong just baffles me. He was, it's, you know, alluding to the sign stealing scandal, just going, come on, man. And I think as core fans, we know there was something going on. But I think Manfred tried playing it down. It's now blow up in his face. Again, everything blows up in Manfred's face. That's why he's a horrible commissioner. The, what I wanted to report to you guys, which is super awesome, is Joey Votto has officially joined the social media world. Exploded this week. Everybody's loving it. I mean, he's an older player. You know, he's kind of one of those really hard-headed, like he's, some people consider him, you know, he looks like one of those grumpy old men when he gets older. But it's just Joey. Joey's a dude that says what's on his mind. And he's a, an intelligent guy and a, just a phenomenal player. But he finally joined IG. He's on Instagram. I don't know how he did it. He did just, it's just the the handle code or the, his uh, IG is Joey Votto. I don't know how he got just Joey Votto. There's like millions of other Joey Votto. So he must have somehow or another IG gave it to him. So I don't know how he did that. But I mean... What's funny about it, he's been posting like crazy too. So he doesn't have like one or two. He just did this like four or five days ago. Today's uh, Monday uh, the 28th. So he's I think he's got five or six posts now. <laughs> so Joey Votto, man, he's got a nice beard going. So it's great. Joey is now part of the IG world, man. Check that out, man. If that doesn't encourage you to get IG, if you're not an IG person, I'm telling you guys out there, I handle social media with my prior company like Twitter, um, all that stuff. And IG is the funnest. I love Instagram. Uh, I have friends that don't have and I just try to encourage them, man, just go get it, man. Just go get it. It's great. And we we pump news through there all day long, 7-24-7. So if you guys really want to be hardcore baseball news club fans, go to our IG, follow our stories. We're, our stories are 24 hours 7. We have stories going nonstop. So check it out. And if, like I said, if Joey Votto doesn't motivate you, I don't know what is. Moving on to other news. Freddie Freeman. The drama in Atlanta is getting bad. And, you know, is is Matt Olson Yoko Ono now? Is this is, is this going to turn into something bad? I don't know. But Freddie Freeman, you know, after he said he felt blindsided by the Olson, Olson signing. And I told you guys this in the last podcast. The GM, Alex Anthropolis, came out and gave a lame statement. He didn't really address it. I thought it was very... Um, I don't know. I just didn't think it had it a really good approach with it. And, you know, there's the way he said it and the way he sounded, it just didn't sound totally sincere in, I, again, I don't know how contracts work, but why would you not tell Freeman once you signed Olsen? Hey man, we signed Olsen, but to, to hear it the way he did, you are blindsided. So you're going, okay, well, you're supposed to be this really good organization. But I feel like there's some a little bit of venom coming out from Alex lately. And what's happening, if you want to know, go even deeper in the Atlanta organization, Austin Riley had to go through arbitration and Dansby Swanson. So here's your two youngest players. You just kind of blindsided Freeman and you're forcing your younger talents. I mean, come on, Austin Riley, dude, 
Dansby Swanson? So they had to go to salary arbitration. And the weird thing is the difference for Austin was just $205,000. So you went to salary arbitration for Austin Riley over $205,000 difference? That is, that's some bullshit. That's nitpicking. That doesn't send a clear signal to your young players that you give a shit. That's really bad. And Swanson missed out by like eight hundred grand. That's a little bit more. I can understand that. But right now, Alex, the GM of the Braves, he's in a hot spot right now. The fans, in relation to the core fans, they're not going to be happy with him. But the Braves are monsters. Braves have, the last couple of years, have built a monster organization. But again, I don't think the fans are going to miss Freddie. And the problem with Matt Olson in Atlanta is if he doesn't, if he starts slow, it's going to be rough. The fans are not going to be nice to him. I know Atlanta fans, they're tough. Uh, they they kind of remind me of New York fans a little bit. They're not too voicey, but they're kind of like St. Louis fans. But I don't know. We'll see how that plays. They'll see how that plays out. So a uh, bold move, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off. In other news, there has been some chatter, and I've seen different news outlets. Usually, I when I hear big chatter like this, but Trey Man City trade talk, I looked at different news outlets, and uh, Mike Elias, the GM for Baltimore, that is a curious move. I'm curious if Trey gets traded. I think he's a fantastic player, but it happened in more than one. I think I saw three different, uh, two social media outlets, and then a legit news outlet uh, talking about scenarios. So there is chatter. We'll see. We'll see. And in other news, uh, talking about Carlos Correa, is his replacement, potential replacement, better than him? Um, Jose Altuve this week, they were talking about Jeremy Pena, the up-and-coming player in the minors for the Houston Astros. They're saying he's better than Carlos Correa. And Altuve even said that. Now, Jeremy Pena arguably is one of the most underrated prospects in the minors. He's an elite defender. Um, when you look at his scouting report, they say long-term future shortstop, uh, very underrated uh, shortstop, and he's phenomenal. And he's have he's been playing during spring training, so that is very interesting. And that makes you wonder how you're going to predict what the Astros are going to do this year. Because last year I thought the Astros are going to start going by the wayside, but that organization is committed for the long term. And even with losing someone like Carlos Correa. You got a guy like Jeremy Pena coming up? Hmm, pretty sweet. Now, speaking of sweet, and I, I this is crazy. Babe Ruth, the famous Babe Ruth called shot. We all know about it, despite how you feel about it, if you believe it or not. Dave Roberts this week on the Dan Patrick Show guaranteed a World Series win for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Boom goes the dynamite when have you ever seen a coach do that or a player guaranteeing a win on the damn patrick show dave roberts putting it out there whoo that's gonna make my uh i, I kind of wonder how that changed the vegas odds i don't know uh umpires news i guess we got to give a little umpire news they're gonna supposedly do more inspections on pitchers with sticky substances. So I the what I gathered is because players learn how to do workarounds on it, they're focusing on those workarounds how pitchers were hiding sticky substances. So they're gonna do more. Jesus guys. You guys got nothing better to do with your time besides bother us. You're supposed to be just calling base some balls and just balls and strikes and and uh geez. All right. Other news, let's see. Oh, yeah. Uh, other news, uh, and, and you know, you see this all through spring training. This is why I'm talking about this. When you talk about Turner for the Dodgers who plays third, the, the hot corner, uh, Miguel Vargas, is he going to be the guy? Are we going to be looking at Miguel Vargas at third base in a Dodger uniform? There's a good chance. He's a fantastic talent, and if, with Turner, maybe – this is going to be last season for Turner. I don't know. Now, in other news, Field of Dreams, don't forget, August 11th, Cub versus Reds. I want to remind you guys about that as much as possible. Uh, man, that's going to be bitching. Last year was phenomenal with the White Sox Yankees and Anderson's walk-off. It's going to be great. 
It's going to be really great. In other news, outfielder Ramel Tapia of the Blue Jays. He's a, uh, yeah, he's a Blue Jay now. Yeah, you see how I did that? Former Colorado player is basically the newest member of the Blue Jays. And he's a speedy, nice slap hitter. Uh, big difference between Randall uh, Krishnuk and, you know, it's a good move. Toronto's loading up, man. Um, loaded up big time, but he is now, went from Colorado, and he is now a Blue Jay. Blue Jays are fun to watch. Uh, he played six seasons in Colorado. He had some really good seasons. If you remember in 2021, he hit 321. He had a great season. A l- tiny pop. You might get five home runs from him, but he's a speedster. And he's um, not only in Toronto, but he's also a uh, pretty decent outfielder. He can play left, center, and right. So very versatile. So it's going to help them in the outfield. And they're looking good. They are looking good. Now, let's move on to other news. I don't ha- I don't want to spend too much time on that. Uh, Bobby Witt Jr. is catching the eyes of a lot of people right now in spring training. Uh, he's <clears throat> We all know who he is, but I don't know. He's starting to look really good. I'm going to let you fantasy guys look at that one. And also comment in the comments what you guys think on uh, YouTube. Uh, Bobby Witt Jr., would you take him on your team? Uh, Detroit is Riley Green, the future outfielder. I was watching Detroit play the the other day. Riley Green's got a great swing, man. I really like that swing. So, interesting. Very interesting. Now, in what was a really bold move, uh, very bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see how it pays off. Sergio Romo joined Seattle. So, interesting on that one. I, I joke around with that because I think his fastball is the same speed as his slider. But he's known for a slider, but Seattle bulking up. Bulking up. And let's see. <clears throat> Another super cool news. O'Neill Cruz, uh, Pittsburgh Pirates shortstop, six, the 6'7 six, shortstop. He hit, a, he hit a tank the other day in spring training. And you guys, everyone, if you haven't seen the news, just talk about, type in O'Neill Cruz HR spring training. He just crushed the ball. But what's interesting fact about him, his name is O'Neill Cruz. He bats left because his father was a gigantic fan of Paul O'Neill of the New York Yankees. So that's why his first name is O'Neill, hence the name. And that's why he bats left. So interesting story with him, but I like that kid. That's a great talent. Big shortstop, but man, like that kid, like that swing. Um, let's go into some other news because we're going to go heavy into the to uh, the divisions. Um, one of the themes we need to talk about that's important that you always forget and always needs to be acknowledged is yo mama. For pitching, um, it's going to be interesting with the bullpens this year and how they do their rotations. I think 15 pitchers make sense. You can either go with a 6, 9, or a 10, 5. You know, 6 starters, 9 bullpen, or go with 5 starters, 10 in the bullpen. It depends on the team, but I think the rotations are going to be very interesting. But I think 15 pitchers make sense in a 26-man um, roster. But I'm curious how that's going to work out because this comes into play because of the minor leagues. You can't cannot be calling up and sending people down as much this season. There's a cap. So that's interesting how that's going to play out. But you know what? I think we need to move on to divisions. Let's talk about some divisions now, guys. But before we do, I got to give you a teaser. Let's talk about the schedule. So right now, now's the time to do it, guys. Figure out a way to have that 24-hour flu. Now it's easier because of COVID. You can say, hey, I don't feel good. I'm sick. I think my lungs are feeling funny. But figure out a way to get April 7th off, guys. Uh, I would try to get a couple buddies to get the day off. You guys can sit there and watch games all day. Go out to a bulk park man go out and watch a game but the first game of the day will be the red sox at the yankees it's going to be a very interesting game because i'm just curious about both those teams this year we're going to talk about them in a little bit on divisions uh next game will be the brewers at the cubs i think the cubs are going to be a little bit more competitive than a lot of people think uh next game will be mets at nationals that could be a good game uh guardians i'm going to start calling them the cleveland spiders and i think you guys listen to my past podcast i prefer spiders so the cleveland spiders will be playing at the royals uh, Mariners at Twins. That's going to be a very interesting game. That is a very interesting game. I like that game. Uh, Pirates at Cardinals. 
Reds at Braves. Houston at Angels. I think that's going to be good, too, because I think the Angels are going to be a better team this year. Uh, Padres at Diamondbacks. So those are your games for April the 7th. Figure it out, man. Figure out a way to, guide, you know, figure out a way to lie to your partner. Or, you know, if you're going to be in trouble one day out of the year, if you're going to get in trouble with your wife or your partner or whatever it is, this is the day, guys. Uh, figure out a way to get out of everything. Or figure out a way to have a game on, even if you're at work. But let's go into the divisions. Now, what we're going to do is talk about... Um, let's talk about each division uh, in relation to what they've done in the offseason. And so when we look at... Let's start with the American League East, for example. I'm going to start off with the New York Yankees. Uh, Yankees, they've got Anthony Rizzo. They had a starting pitcher, Andrew Heaney. He went to L.A., uh, Corey Kluber's gone to Tampa, so he lost two pitchers, and then Clint Frazier's gone to Chicago, and Jolie Rodriguez, who's a, a left-handed, um, uh, I'm sorry, a, a lefty relief pitcher, they got him for $2 million, but Yankees haven't done a lot. Now, the Yankees were a very strong team last year, six in ERA, uh, very, good, very good fielding team. They picked up Josh Donaldson. Uh, but you, you know what? Actually, he's looking pretty good, guys. I'm going to be admitting I've saw the, I've been watching spring training. You know, seeing the other day when the Yankees went wild, uh, when you see Judge and Stanton and Josh all hitting, that team has potential to be uh, some headaches. But Yankees haven't made big, you know, like changes um, into their entire organization. I mean, offensively, they're still a good hitting team. They're six in HRs. They're pitching still the same. So the Yankees are kind of going with the same club in a way. I mean, they've, like I said, they've made changes, but they haven't overhauled anything. Uh, having Rizzo is going to be great. Um, we'll wait to see. But their theme was their average. They're 23rd in average. So as a Yankee fan, do you think they address that? Josh Donaldson's not going to be the answer. So DJ's not going to hit 268 again in 678 plate appearances. So we'll see. Boston. Um, what has Boston done? Well, they went and picked up Trevor Story. This is uh, they were ranked uh, second most errors last year, so they were a horrible fielding team, just like the Yankees. Um, picking up Trevor Story is going to help out a lot, and they signed him six years, 140. They lost Kyle Schwarber, so they lost the stick. Edward Rodriguez, pitcher, they lost to Detroit. Uh, they picked up James Paxton, uh, James D. Jake Diekman, I think that's a good move. Uh, Mike Wacha, he went from Tampa to Boston, but then they lost Garrett Richards and Jose Iglesias, uh, Rich Hill, Adam Adovino, Martin Perez, Matt, uh, Matt, uh, Matthew Stram came over, uh, and there's some other things going on. So this is a team that was ranked 15th in the ERA, and that's a lot of pitching that you guys got rid of. I don't know. It's interesting. Offensively, they're, of course, going to be strong. They're third average last year in 10th HRs. I mean, Kyle, uh, losing Kyle's not that big a deal for them, but picking up Trevor Story is a big deal. But that's interesting. You really need to focus on pitching. As a Red Sox fan, do you feel uh, uh, that's filled the void? Did they? Is that the right moves to make? We're going to have to wait and see. Uh, now, when you look at Tampa Bay, uh, they lost Nelson Cruz. They lost a uh, relief pitcher, Colin McHugh. But they picked up Brooks Rally. They signed Corey Kluber for one year. I mean, Corey's like one of those guys that just bounce around. They're, they're, I think Corey's one of those 15 start guys. If you can get him for 15, you're good. Uh, they picked up Michael Wacha and David Robertson. But here's a team that was, you know, we know who they were. They were the best team in the division. Fourth in ERA, one in average. I don't think Nelson Cruz is going to hurt him, to be honest with you guys. And mostly what they've other signed other than that is non-position players, just bullpen. This is already one of the, I mean, uh, pitching, excuse me. It's one of the best pitching staff. So I think Tampa is still looking, looking pretty solid, man. Now the team that is fun to watch is Toronto. Uh, there are some people out there saying that Toronto's going for it right now. This is a phenomenal hitting team last year. And they had 10th in ERA. Well, Marcus Simeon, lost him. 
I don't think that's going to affect him offensively as much. Robbie Ray, ooh, that's going to hit you in the pitching. But they went and got in Kevin Gosman, so from San Francisco. Um, they got rid of Steven Matz, another pitcher. And then you see uh, Kikuchi. He came over from Seattle, so that can help out. Yimi Garcia, he came over from Houston, but they lost Kirby Yates. And but and then fielding wise, uh, Corey Dickerson. I don't think that makes a difference. So if you're a Toronto fan, your pitching's looking good, and Toronto seemed to be focusing on that a lot in the offseason. The only Marcus Simeon and Corey Dickerson are position players. The rest of the moves have all been starting pitching, relief pitching. So I think they are addressing that, and it looks like that. Um, Baltimore, I. <sighs> There's not much to talk about with Baltimore. I mean, you guys aren't spending money, and it's really sad because I thought you guys last year and in, during the COVID season especially, I thought you guys were going to be really moving and shaking, but you, you, you signed Jordan Lyles for one year for $7 million. I, I, You know, there's there's nothing going on. So it's it's sad. So let's just, just move to the American League Central, and it's just, sorry, Royal Oriole fans, but, I mean, really, what am I supposed to report for you guys? You're... Your ownership sucks. Um, White Sox. They've done a bunch. Uh, Carlos Rodon. He's gone. He's in San Francisco. But then they went out and got pitching. Uh, Kendall Graveman and Joe Kelly. Hey. They addressed that. Uh, second baseman, Lurie Garcia. They gave him three years, 16.5. So he's going to be at second for a while. But they lost uh, Ryan uh, Tipera to the Angels. But they picked up some more position players in Josh Harrison and Cesar Hernandez. So as a White Sox fan, you guys were fifth in ERA last year, fifth in average. It's not a very competitive division, but I feel like it's going to be more competitive this year. I uh, only one, two, three, four pitching moves you've made and two of those you've lost. Uh, and what I mean is lost the uh, Carlos Rodon and Ryan Tapiria aren't there anymore. Rodan's a big loss. I, I That really scratched my head why they got rid of him. So Chicago, are you really addressing it? Or are you just sticking with your core club? You're just sticking with it. And you're like, this is what we have. This is what we're using. Well, you got to think about it because when you look at Detroit, they're not playing around. Uh, Detroit went and got Javi Baez for six years. Then they got Eduardo Rodriguez from Boston for five years. That's a starting pitcher. And they went and got out Andrew uh, Chaffin. He's a left-hander. Two years, $13 million. Uh, Michael P- uh, Pineda, the famous Seattle pitcher, he's there now. They did get rid of Matt Boyd. And, uh, but, I mean, when you look at Detroit, they got young talent. I was just talking about one of their talented players. They're going to be more competitive. They went out and got pitching, which they should have. They are 17th in ERA. That's not too bad. 16th in average. Miguel's not going to be... Miguel's on the on the backside, guys. I'm sorry. He's on the backside. I love Miguel Cabrera, but he's he's getting up there, man. Uh, Miguel's going to have to stay in a, a hitter-friendly ballpark to be... Uh, to even be in conversations. Uh, when you move on over to Cleveland, uh, I feel sorry for Spider fans. Y- yeah. Uh, Roberto Perez isn't your savior. Because you lost him to Pittsburgh. Nick Whitgren wasn't your savior either. He's in St. Louis. So it's just, oh, God. Um, let's just move on. I'm sorry, Cleveland. You guys got such a great historic stadium and, and a beautiful stadium. And I don't know. I feel sorry for teams like that that are tanking it when their ownership don't care. Minnesota. Minnesota's doing a lot. You got Carlos Correa for three years. Interesting move. You got rid of your pitcher in Michael Pineda. But you went and got Dylan Bundy, a starter. But you lost a pitcher in Alex Colum to Colorado. And then you lost defense in now Dalton Simmons. Now, I think Minnesota is going to be a competitive team. But 26 ERA, did you address that? Uh, no. Nah. I don't think Dylan Bundy is going to be your savior. Uh, they, they got Joe Smith from Seattle. I don't know. I think Minnesota, I, I think they're a good team. 
they've got a lot of talent. I feel like they can do better than 26 ERA, but I really don't think you're going to get much out of it than that. I, I think they're in, I don't know. I'm, I'm still on the fence with them. I'm being honest. I still haven't given my prediction for them on the season. I, I feel like they've got a lot of talent, but let's move on to the AL West. And of course, we're going to talk about the Los Angeles Angels. I think they're, this division, it's going to be a competitive division with Texas and Seattle. Houston, Oakland's going to be the stepchild and they're going to be beat up on most likely, but they had a 13th ranked ERA. I don't think they're going to be as bad as we think, but the fire cell's not looking good right now, guys. Uh, you lose a big part of your offense, but anyways, LA's making moves. I mean, Ratio Iglesias, um, he got the four years, 58 million. They went and got Noah Syndergaard. I don't think that's that's big a deal, but they got Aaron Loop, uh, Ryan Tepera, or Tepera, I'm having a bad time pronouncing that. Uh, Michael Lawrenson, Dylan Bundy, Archie uh, Archie Bradley. I'm sorry, Dylan Bundy went to uh, Minnesota. They also did, if you remember me talking before, they've done a lot of international signings. So they this is a team with a 22nd ranked ERA. I think they addressed that. The 10th ranked average. They get Mike Trout back healthy. You know, if the other players play up to par, I think LA is going to be a lot better team this year. Um, they're addressing the thing they need to address. I think of most of the clubs, they're one of the top three or four clubs that's addressing their concern, which is pitching. 22nd ERA, they're not going to be 22nd this year. They're moving on up, guys. I think LA is going to probably surprise some people. Uh, Oakland, uh, oh, God. Let's just move on. You guys are just, your owners are making it very clear you guys don't want to stay in the Bay Area. So let's move on to Texas. Oh, no, excuse me. A part of Texas. Houston. Houston. First in average, seventh in the array, first in runs, 27th in, in uh, most errors. Their minors were 29th. Got rid of Korea. Justin Verlander's back. Two years, 50 million left on that. Uh, Kendall Graveman's gone. But they got Hector Neris from Phillies. They got rid of Zach Greinke. They got rid of um, Yimi Garcia. And they got rid of Brooks uh, Rayleigh. So they've got a lot of that. That's a lot of clearing of your, you know, of your, uh, how much money you're spending. I'm really, again, last year I thought they would start going backwards, but look what they did. I'm on the fence with them right now. And I'll, I'll give you my decision before April 7th, but I'm still on the fence with them. I, I don't know how Houston's going to pan out. They're still a solid organization, but at the same time, um, I don't think there's much to address for them. When you're seventh ERA and first in average, maybe you just need to do a couple adjustments. That's why they're a head scratcher. And then you go into Texas. Of course, Texas is on the radar right now. They've been spending the most money in the offseason, I think, out of any team. Uh, Corey Seager, 10 years, 325. Woo. Marcus Simeon for Toronto, 7 years, 175. <laughs> Dude, you guys doing the math right there? That's $400 million. Two players. John Gray, four years, fifty-six million. Nick Martinez, another starter. Um, he went to San Diego, excuse me, almost. Uh, but you, you got a position player in Brad Miller, two years at ten. Uh, you got rid of Jordan Lyles, but then you went and got Garrick Richards. We'll see how that works out for you. Cole Calhoun, I think that's a good little chip to put in there. He's a scrappy player. Uh, you got Martin Perez as a from Boston for a starter. You got a uh, you know you got guys in the minors you might be able, that you've signed like Greg Holland. Um, I think Texas is definitely making a statement. Obviously, they're going to be a funner team to watch. But just like the Padres, you can do a lot of investment and hope for change. But it does it come together. Now, uh, Texas was horrible in average and horrible in ERA. They're ranked 29th in average, 23rd in ERA. Did they address the average? Yes. They are going to be a better hitting team. They addressed it big time. Did they address pitching? Yes, I think they did. And they still are addressing it. Can they do more? Yes, they're going to do need, need to do more. But I, you know what? 23rd ERA, you get yourself down to 15th, top 15. You're right there in playoff contention. Or maybe, you know, we're going to have 14 slots now. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, guys. I don't know. Uh, Seattle. Seattle's been doing good. I've been love watching them play. Uh, they had 16th ERA last year. Well, they went and got Robbie Ray. 
That's going to help your team from 16th year array, especially when you sign them for five years and 115. Um, but they lost uh, UC uh, Kaikuchi to Toronto. Um, but they did also lose James Paxson. So you're like, oh, man. And then they lost Tyler Anderson. Joe Smith. And they picked up Sergio Romo. So, uh, uh, they lost Sean Doolittle. You see where I'm going with this? So, I like Seattle. Again, I'm on the fence with these guys right now. But you're 16th in your A. Um, all they've done in the offseason, with the exception of a, a minor leaguer, Steven Zuza, is all pitching. Which is a positive sign. But, man, you're, you're ranked 30th in hitting. I'm not sure that's going to do it for you. So let's jump on over to the National League East, starting with Atlanta. I think Atlanta is just a team at this point, guys. They're just, they're loaded. They're still going to be the team to beat. And I think they're, along with the the Dodgers, the, the two teams that beat the National League, but Atlanta is still a tough team. They're 18 ERA, 12th in the average. Well, yeah, they lost Freddie Freeman. They got, uh, they lost Jorge Solar. But they picked up, you know, they got Eddie Rosario. I'm sorry, they didn't pick him up. In the two years, $18 million. They did get Kenley Jansen. They get, they get another pitcher in Colin McHugh and Kirby Yates. And they went and got Manuel Pena as a catcher. And they lost a little bit of pitching to Drew Smiley and Chris Martin. But they're still going to be there. They, all that young talent, that's still Matt Olson's going to be keep them there they still got it you're not going to go eighth year away eighth year away and go bad i think they did address certain positions um pitching wise kenley johnson one year 16 so they're hoping he's going to fill in a stronger void in the bullpen which can work backwards if you think in a good way if you got a strong guy in the back end because kenley's not just a one inning guy he can go two innings no problem so that's going to help your bullpen push to where your starting rotation only needs to go four maybe or five so I'm on they're still the team to beat and I think they're the team to beat for this division but they're very interesting to watch and I don't know if they've really addressed uh their offseason their needs uh your eighth in ERA you're not going to be dropping too far off the radar after that but um let's move into the next team the Mets I think the Mets offense is totally different this year uh they got rid of Javi Baez but they picked up Max Scherzer. And what have been great is one of the greatest things is, like I said, watching DeGrom and Scherzer pitch in the game and also watching the two just sit there in the dugout. Two wizards of the game talking. Love it. Um, they got Starlane Marte. Listen, I watched that guy play the other day, and he in the right – they're going to put him in right field, they're saying. Now, watching him play brings a whole different level that they didn't have before. I mean, he's a veteran status. He can hit. He's got pop. He's got a great glove. He's got speed. But he was in this base running situation where he was at second, and it was a little duck snort out to center. And because he's a vet, he he knew where the ball was going to go, and he ran home. Bader couldn't throw him out at home on a short, you know, drop into the outfield. If he wasn't, put it this way, if it was any other player in the league, they most likely probably wouldn't have made it home. So he brings a little extra there for you. Um... Marcus Stroman, well, that's a big arm to lose, but he's gone. He went to Chicago. Uh, Mark Canha will be there in left field. No Syndergaard's gone. Uh, you went and got Eduardo Escobar for third. And, you know, Aaron Loop, you lost. Uh, Brad Hand, you lost. Yuri's Familia, you lost. So you lost pitching in some respects. You were ninth year A, 20 in average. Did they address it? Yes. I, I think they addressed the pitching. Um, obviously, Max. But, hey, Stroman was a good pitcher, too. I'm not knocking either guy. But it's not like you're saying Max is that much. Marcus Stroman's a competitive player. Don't get me wrong. He's a good pitcher. But Max, it's not like you really got rid of a bad pitcher. Marcus, was a, I think, would have been a good chip to keep on the team. The Mets are a curious team for me. I know they're going to be better. I think they're going to be better offensively to a lot of teams than what people expect. I think they're going to be a big surprise offensively. And I think they're they're going to be a better team. They're going to be battling Atlanta. But I'm just curious how, how strong they're going to be. Uh, Miami, again, another team that hasn't done anything. Uh, they got 
Avisel Garcia in uh, uh, Jorge Solar, but really, I don't know. Miami fans, yeah, you're you're uh, you're in for the long haul. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Let's move on to the Philadelphia Phillies. Uh, Phillies were ranked seven, nineteenth in ERA and eighteenth in average. Did they address it? Um, I think they have on both ends. Uh, Nick Castellanos, whew, and we talked about this numerous podcasts. And I've been talking about it since uh, David Dombrowski, the president of baseball operations, said he wants to focus on outfield pitching. I think he's done it. I think he's, I think Philadelphia might. This is going to be a great division, guys. Seriously. Um, so Nick Castellanos is going to be in the outfield with Bryce. Kyle Schwarber is going to be in the outfield. They did lose a right-handed pitcher in Hector Neris. But they picked up uh, Corey Kaibo. And then when you go down the line, they got Brad Hand. They got uh, Yuri's Familia. They went and got uh, an outfielder in Obadel Herrera. But, again, they let things go. They let uh, some pitchers go. But I think these moves will make them more competitive. I really do. Um, I don't think Ian Kennedy is that big of a loss. I don't think Archie Bradley was a huge loss. But, you know, these are pieces they are moving around. They're going to have pop. They're going to have pop. But I don't... I'm on the fence. I don't think they've addressed the pitching as much as they want to. Is it going to be a little bit better pitching? I think it is. Is it going to be enough to get them to where they need to go? I don't think so. I don't think this is going to put them up there with Atlanta and the Mets. It's going to put, they still might get in that last playoff spot. Um, they are definitely a playoff contender. Now, when you talk about Washington, uh, Washington hasn't really done much either. They're not going to be competitive in this division. They did go get Nelson Cruz. Uh, Cesar Hernandez, but they did also pick up uh, Sean Doolittle and Steve Sajic. I'm probably totally killing that, sorry. This is a team that was 24th in ERA. They're still a good hitting team. I don't think they did enough. I don't think they did enough. Okay, let's move on over to the National League Central. This is kind of like my crapshoot division. This is an interesting division. I think this will be the weakest division in the National League. Um, when you look at Milwaukee, Here's a team that wasn't a good hitting team. That's what hurt them in the playoffs. Um, 27th ranked batting average, 18th ranked home runs. Really not that good, but third ranked ERA, uh, ERA uh, ninth most uh, errors. So not really good defensively, but what they do? Well, <clears throat> Andrew McCutcheon, I like that. He came over from Philadelphia. Just a one-year 8.5. I think that's a great deal. Andrew brings a lot of pop. He had a good season last year. He's a veteran. He's an awesome presence in the dugout. This could just loosen up the team enough. I mean, you never know. Um, addressing pitching, they didn't really need to address a lot. I mean, when you're ranked third in the net in Major League Baseball, uh, you probably don't need to move around a lot with your pitching rotation. However, they did go out. And get some pieces. Brad Boxberger. I mean, didn't go out and get him, but they gave him a one-year 2.5. Uh, they also get when got Trevor Gott. I don't know how much that's going to change it. But, again, they didn't do a lot pitching-wise. Uh, their main concern in the offseason is their hitting. So, they got rid of Garcia to Miami. But they, you know, like I said, the, they also got rid of Ed, Edward Eduardo Escobar. So, you're losing some bats there. But you get Andrew. That's not a bad pickup. Pedro uh, Severino from Baltimore. Okay. And that that's pretty much it in the offseason. So they're hitting. They haven't really addressed that. They've addressed some pieces. But I think Milwaukee's going with what they have. They're hoping maybe the Yelich finally comes back. I don't know. But I don't think Milwaukee. It wasn't like they did a lot where you're like, woo, you know, Milwaukee. No, it's just Milwaukee. So this division, again, is my crapshoot division. And then when you look at St. Louis, kind of same thing. You know, here's a team that was decent hitting team, middle of the road, 13th average, 15th home runs, uh, 11th ERA. But you know what? There's been a big change. They had one of the most historic runs in Major League history last year under the leadership of Mike Schilt. But he's gone. He's with San Diego. San Diego. Uh, Adam Wainwright, Yadier Molina. Big questions right there. Are they... They're old. I mean, let's face it, but Yadier, I think, will always catch. But you still need a bat out of him. And Adam, he seems to can 
continuously get better. I've talked about this in prior podcasts. How the spin rate's been jumping out of the roof the last couple of years. Yeah, yeah, we'll see how that changes with the new rules with umpires. Drew Vernigan from Nippon, so Japanese baseball, the ham fighters, two-year deal. They got a good rotation, and their rotation's built to battle with Milwaukee. Uh, you got Flaherty, Wainwright, see what we get out of him, Mats, Dakota, Hudson, uh, Miles, uh, Mikolas, and then, like I said, you got the Drew Vernigan. So they, they're looking good. So in the offseason, uh, pitching-wise, you know, they really didn't do much. Uh, Nick Whitgren, they got from Cleveland, but they kind of added some pieces for offense. Uh, they went and got um, Corey Dickerson from Toronto. Now, the big splash this week is Albert Pujols. We talked about that. I, I don't know what you're going to get out of him. Obviously, you're going to get a 240, 230 hitter. Not very fast. DH most of the time. I don't know if that's going to hurt or help you. I mean, really, is that going to hurt or help you? Uh, Matt Carpenter is gone. Carlos Martinez. So they didn't really address hitting. Like, they didn't, they're sticking with their core. They've got a good core hitting team. I mean, obviously, they were ranked 13th in Major League Baseball last year on average. But it looks like just they're sticking with their rotation. They're sticking with their – they got, we're going to break down bullpens next week. But it looks like this division is going to be going to Milwaukee and St. Louis, at least on the – prelim report here in spring training from baseball news club or ball and play um i don't know you know let me know in the comments fans did you did milwaukee or st louis do enough to really shock the national league i don't think they did now a team i think that has stepped up to the plate after just looking horrible last year because of the fire sale was chicago cubs Uh, we all know what they did last year they got rid of their whole team and they just sucked but in the offseason Did they address those concerns? Well, ranked 24th in batting average and 27th in ERA. I think they did. Uh, Marcus Stroman is a nice chip. Three years, 71 million. That's a nice chip. Uh, What else did they do for pitching? Well, they went and got Drew Smiley from Atlanta. One year deal, 5.2, but hey, they're addressing the pitching. Uh, Michael Givens from Cincinnati, again, addressing the pitching. That's good. Uh, David Robinson from Tampa Bay. Uh, Chris Martin from Atlanta. Daniel... Norris from Milwaukee, yeah. And they got a minor league deal with the Stephen Brault, but that's a left-handed thrower. And uh, they did get rid of some pieces in John Adam and, and Robinson and Shacharnos. But hey, if you want, if you're a Cub fan and you're like worried about pitching, they did go. There's a that's a lot of pieces. I just named off a lot of pitching to add to the. So it looks like Chicago is looking at really focusing on pitching, uh, very hard. But if you want to look at offensively, they went and got Ian Gomes. So they went and got a chip there. Uh, Jonathan Villar. Hey, another good chip right there. And I think Andrelton Simmons is a great move getting him from Minnesota. You know what Andrelton can do with the glove. And he's a decent, he could be a decent stick. I think in 250 to 270 out of him with a little bit of pop. Hey, not bad, man. Not bad. So they address that a little bit. Uh, Clint Frazier, um, 27 years old. Outfielder. See what you can get out of him. But I think they did address the pitching more than the hitting. Cubs will be competitive. I don't think they're going to be division runners. Um, they also got Seiya Suzuki. So they also got him added to the team. So it's interesting. Cubs, I, again, uh, Cubbies, I don't, I see them being middle of the road. They might be the surprise team and pop up on the radar and be competitive and, and go for a 14th slot in the playoffs. I don't know. I do you know what I'm saying? There's going to have to be some trades. I think the pitching in Milwaukee and St. Louis are just too competitive. Uh, when we look at Pittsburgh, obviously Pittsburgh is a team that's last in everything. 27th in average, last in HRs, last in runs, 28th in ERAs, last in errors. But they got one of the best minors. Well, pretty much anything that they do right now is going to be a plus. Uh, Roberto Perez, they picked up catcher from Cleveland. Um, they... They got rid of Chad Cool, Colorado, but not really much went on. I mean, they went and got Jose Quintana from San Francisco for throwing. Uh, Steven Brault, they got rid of Chicago. So really, you're looking at it and you're like, what really happened? I mean, Dan Vogelbach from Milwaukee, they're pretty much looking just to be a team down towards the bottom. I mean, really. And it sucks because I'm always talking about how I like 
uh, Pittsburgh. I like their stadium. I like their history. I think they're a great organization. They just the ownership doesn't give a crap right now. But you got a great minor league system, so they could be, um, you know, a competitive team. And I talked about O'Neill uh, being that young shortstop. He's going to be good. So they're going to be a fun team. But obviously, when you're ranked that low and you do that many moves in the offseason, you're not looking at anything positive. And another team in the division that we're going to be talking about like that is Cincinnati. Cincinnati's going through the fire cell. Uh, God, it's going to be a bad team. You, you lost Nick uh, Castellanos, but you went and got Tommy Fan from one year. Again, when you see these one-year deals, it tells you a lot of the mentality of uh, Cincinnati ownership. They get rid of Nick, who had five years left. Um, I mean, they got rid of Nick. He, he's got five years, $100 million out of Philadelphia, is what I meant to say. Tommy Fan's a one-year deal. Um, Donovan Solano... He came over from San Francisco. Hunter Strickland came over pitching-wise. There's really nothing that really sticks out. I mean, you you didn't do a lot. I oh, God, there's other guys that just didn't sign that are gone. And it's just, it's a sad-looking team. But it, what's interesting is you go get Colin Marone uh, from Pittsburgh. And you got Joey Votto. So I don't know if they're going to start getting Joey into DH. I don't know why. He's a stud first baseman. So tough love for Joey Votto, man. Uh, just, just going to be kind of a, a tough season, I think, for Cincinnati. Uh, they might be battling Pittsburgh for last place. I don't know. I liked Cincinnati a lot last year. I thought they had the grit and they were a good core team. But, you know, you're, you're 20th in ERA. I don't think you really address that. You're still a good hitting team because it's a hitting stadium. Uh, ranked sixth in average, but I don't know. Um, let's look at the San Diego Padres. Uh, you would think they're a good average hitting team with that lineup, but they're ranked 27th, 14th ERA. Miners isn't as good. They got a new coach, but hey, they lost, they lost Mark Mellons on Arizona, who had a fabulous year last year for closing at that end spot. He signed a two-year deal with them, uh, but they did go get Nick Martinez, eh. uh, Tommy Pham with the Cincinnati. Uh, Luis Garcia came on over, two-year deal, seven, so we'll see what he does. Uh, Daniel Hudson with the LA, and Matthew Stram with the Boston after having a good performance for the scouts. Um, I don't think they addressed anything with hitting. I mean, really, it's just all pitching that you're looking at that they've really addressed other than getting rid of Tommy Fan, And they're going to be without Fernando Tatis. Um, Mike Clevenger has been throwing in the in the minors, so that's a positive thing for the Padres. Uh you Darvish is going to pitch better, Sneal. So they're pitching wise, they're going to be in that. They're going to be a playoff contending team, absolutely. But it's the offense and the loss of Tatis that's going to really put a question mark on San Diego if they have a sluggish start. And but they went and got Luke Voigt. so Luke Voigt could be that guy to keep them afloat. Uh, could keep them competitive until Tatis comes back. San Diego's a big question mark. I hate to put that on them, but there's they did spend a lot. They didn't really come together last year. Uh, things didn't work out, but they got a new coach, so we will find out. Um, the Dodgers, oh good lord, there's a, you know, Dodgers ranked 11th in average, 4th in home runs, best ERA in baseball. We've talked about this, obviously Mookie Betts, only 122 games, he's got to play better. Cody Bellinger, the one, you know, that's not going to work. They re-signed Clayton Kershaw. Um, Corey Seager left. Dude, 10 years, 325, that's big. Uh, Freddie Freeman came over. 6 years, 162. Uh, Max left for the Mets, obviously. Chris Taylor staying. Joe Kelly's gone. Boop. Clayton Kershaw signed the one-year deal for 17. Uh, Kenley Jansen's gone. Ooh, big change there. I mean, when seeing him not there at the end of the game for Dodger fans is going to be kind of weird. Uh, Corey Nibel left. Uh, they did pick up Andrew Haney, starting pitcher, and, and Tyler Anderson, and um, Daniel Hudson. They got rid of Pujols, which is a good move, I think. Uh, Kevin Pillar is gone, so on and so forth. But they've done a lot of moves. But they're they're the Dodgers. They are going to be the team to beat in this division, along with San Francisco. I think San Francisco is still a tough team. Um, but yeah, LA is going to beat there. There's not really much to talk about with them because, you know, like Dave Roberts said, they're picked to win the World Series. They're going they're picked to be, you know, NLCS. If you're going to pick any top three teams, you got to pick them with Atlanta. And uh, to to make it, and then San Francisco, seventh in average last year, second in ERA, and um, you know Gabe Kapler, manager of the year, absolutely, man. This team was not expected to be that much better. Uh, got rid of Chris Bryant, 
curious how that's going to impact them. Got rid of uh, Kevin Gosman, who was a good pitcher for them, but they went and got Carlos Rodon. Great pickup. They got uh, gave extensions to Andrew DiScafellini, Alex Wood. They picked up Alex Cobb. Um, then you're looking at like uh, Jock Peterson, a one-year deal. You got Matt Boyd coming on and over, who's a pitcher. So they've they've making some move. They got some minors with Carlos Martina, um, Car- Mar- Martina, excuse me. Jose Quintana went to Pittsburgh. So to me, they lost pitching, but getting Carlos Rodan is a great left-handed move, especially in that stadium. I still think they're going to be competitive with their pitching and their hitting. Um, we'll see how that works out. I think we're looking at San Francisco still battling with LA for this division, but we'll have to wait and see. Um, and then let's look over at Colorado. And again, next week, guys, I know I'm just kind of glossing over the stuff, but I'm really going to go into my predictions for everybody in every division because uh, I have to come out with that before the 7th. But Colorado went and got Chris Bryant. That's a good move, but you, you got rid of Chris uh, Trevor Story. Ooh, John Gray left. You're pitching. And, and the thing with Colorado, you were great with hitting, of course, because it's a hitting stadium, but 25th in the ERA. So how did they address the ERA? Uh, they got Alex Colomb, they got Chad Cool. Uh, so they did do an extension on um, on Hoolies. But really, what have you what have you done? Um, Chris Bryan is the offensive move, which is fine, but I don't see Colorado didn't really do much. I mean, you you're probably looking at the same team as last year. You got Bud Black, who's not a good coach in my opinion. Uh, they had one of the worst offenses. In the history of the organization, if you look at the run scored, they did not do well. Chris Bryant's going to help, but you got rid of Trevor Story. So it's it's just one of those things like, okay, how fun are you going to be? Are you going to be fun in the first half and suck in the second half? I don't know. And then Arizona is the same thing. Arizona is like Pittsburgh. You're just a horrible team all the way around. 26th in average, 29th in home run, 29th in ERA. Uh, your minors are okay, but you ain't got Mark Melanson. Hey, you know, let's save those games if we can for two years, $14 million. Uh, I Ian Kennedy bringing them on home. I don't know how that's going to work. Zach Davies is coming back, is coming over from Chicago. Uh, really not much going on. You got a position player in Cole Calhoun and went to Texas, so you're not really doing anything. Um, you're helping the back end with Mark Melanson, but it is what it is in Arizona. I mean, Arizona, you got to be feeling just like Pittsburgh and other clubs. Like, what the hell are we doing? We're not really rebuilding. We're not really doing anything that's going to be helping us in the short term this looks bad for arizona it really does but what we're going to do we're done with the divisions i'm going to close out the podcast um thank you very much for listening next week i will be giving my predictions for every division every slot so every division whoever's going to win it who's in second third fourth fifth just like what we did last year i have to do this before april 7th uh i always want to give my predictions before the season starts Obviously, predictions can change, but we will be giving our predictions next week. It's going to be the most exciting thing in baseball, so tune in. Um, Again, please comment. If you're on YouTube, comment on any of these topics. Follow us on IG, Baseball News Club, Ball and Play. Download our podcast today. We've been getting a lot of downloads as baseball is approaching. We really appreciate it, guys. Thank you for the support. And also in the link in YouTube, we do have a PayPal. If you guys want to donate some money, that would very much be appreciated. I did dump about $1,200 into new equipment in the off season to bring better content to you guys. So anything you can give me to make up that money would be great. And as time goes on, it obviously will help us grow. We want to start doing merch eventually. We got big visions, guys, but I need your support. And I appreciate all your support to this point. And uh, have a good weekend. Get all the baseball you can in. Oh, yeah, by the way, T-Mobile. If you're a T-Mobile person, I think next week you can get MLB free on your phone. Um, I tried it before. I didn't really care for it. I ended up having to buy the package because I have to use it on all different devices, tablets, my PC. But check that out. Anyways, guys, have a great week. Thanks for listening to Ball and Play. Sesma signing out.